All right, welcome to my live stream. Um, I was just on uh, Gary's um, while I was working and proceeding to get some work done on uh, coloring my comic page. And then I went, took a break for lunch, and then I got to hit the, the grindstone again and start working. So uh, I'm not going to do my pitches at the beginning um, of uh, these streams. I think there's sometimes it's just like, we want to just get into the work. So I'll mention uh, where you can find my work and stuff like that um, at the end of the video. But if you're ever curious, you can just like check out my stuff. Um, there's links to all my books and stuff like that uh, below. But for now, I basically want to get into the fun process of coloring. Um, uh, so we started this on the last stream where I started kind of making selections and um, comping out like the page and kind of envisioning like what my final page for uh, for page three of Not Death But Love um, was going. So I want to just get right back into it. If you guys are curious to watch some of the other process of the iteration of this as I've been coloring it, I definitely check out Gary Hodge's stream because I got a lot of the art done and we had a really good conversation. Um, but now let's get into it and, uh, back, I'll, I'll show you the progress of where I'm at now. I feel like I've made pretty good progress. So maybe another hour or so, and we'll probably be done with the colors. And then I can get into roughing and comping, um, the next pages and finalizing other pages. So here we go. Let's go back to the, um, the thing. So I'll be working over here. Um, when we're doing roughs below here, you're going to see the scripts, but right now we're not working on roughs, So it's blank. Uh, so right now we're just going to get into it. So um, right now we have these finished colors. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the uh, very mild amount of shading that's going on here. And let me move this. Jake is joining in the chats. And so let's get into it. So let's do it. All right. Um, Jake, welcome to and good morning to you, buddy. Or afternoon or I don't know what time it is um, where you're at right now. <laughs> But anyhow, so um, so yeah, so we're gonna basically start continue laying out our flats on this and trying to kind of work out what we want this to look like. So right now I've basically laid out everything, and the one thing I need to do is get back into these uh, brown areas of color. Um, oh, and then Jake said it's 11 p.m. where he's at. Nice. All right, so I have a fresh pot of coffee brewed, and we're going to get right into this. Um, I kind of got into like how I work reductively a little bit on some previous <clears throat> previous ones, but, uh, but I'll continue to kind of work through this. The unfortunate part about this is um, it's just like mostly tedious work, you know, where you're going in, you're selecting flat areas, and then you're <clears throat> deselecting other areas. Um, that's basically like the magic trick of good, solid, flat color. Um, the fun stuff, if you were going to render, which I'm probably not, most of this I want to have have the look of like toned illustrations. And um, <clears throat> in order to kind of make that work, um, like, I wanted to have, like, I don't know if you guys remember those frog and toad books, like the children's books um, by Arnold Lobel, I believe, is the illustrator. I wanted to have that kind of Lobel style. Um, that's kind of how I envision the whole look of this, so that it will fit in, like, the Victorian era. I am already seeing that I don't know if I like the sky being super bright. So once we have all our flats laid out, we can go in and kind of modify and tweak um, I'm trying to get it as close as possible to like the colors I want on the final, but uh, but I also am gonna do so with the knowledge that I can just go in and tweak stuff that isn't quite working, and we're gonna kind of see how far we get. Also, just to keep the idea of a unified and limited palette, you'll notice that I'm trying to pull as many colors that I've previously used as possible i'm trying to kind of keep it within a certain limit so if there's like a tone of green that i want throughout the page i want it to be consistent and kind of used across the board um i do feel like just looking at the color without the line 
Jake said, yeah, the illustrator is Lobel. So I wanted to have that vibe. And I feel like I'm effectively doing that. The catch is that I'm also going to want um, probably to change the time of day to be a little earlier because it definitely looks like nighttime. If I look at the rendering, it could be a little brighter. If I look at just the flat color, um, it still looks like it's like midday and I want it to seem a little, little earlier. So we'll get into that a little later. But for now, I'm just trying to kind of fill in um, these different kind of sequences and, and see how far we can get. Um, now, I did like, I feel like I did already pick a brown and I was going to deselect those, but I think I got uh, distracted being between streams. So I'm going to kind of try to get this working a little better. I want this to be like a nice, I'm using the hue saturation tool. I'm not sure why that isn't showing up on uh, camera, the tool itself. But basically all I'm doing is hitting command U and that gives you the option to kind of like pull from the hues you already have, the saturation you have and make adjustments from there. Um, I like using that. Um, it's kind of similar to working in um, HSB layers, I believe they're called in, in um, Adobe Illustrator. But it's a nice way to kind of be able to like quickly comp out colors and make sure they're all in a like unified palette. I'm also going to have a relatively easier time with color on this because I'm being I'm going to be coloring this very literally like I, I don't think um, save like dream sequences or something like that. I don't think I'm going to get into too much abstract use of color. Um, so if something's brown, it's going to be brown. If something's blue, it's going to be blue. Um, and that's kind of like. If you're getting into illustration or something like that, that's an option and that's something to be conscious of. Like, are you going to consciously choose? Just a good thing to be aware of. I like this color that I'm using for the sand here. I think that in the area, this sand is a little orangey. That that deeper area next to the, the hills there. So we're going to kind of find that deeper area. It's feeling uncomfortable. And then we're going to go here and kind of modify that. So again, I'm just kind of reducing, working reductively, getting rid of the areas once I've figured out a color that are going to have that color. And then always zooming out too to see are there other areas that I want to implement this flat color with. And I think my son is pretending that he's in The Sims <laughs> in the background. He's playing The Sims with his aunt, um, who's awesome for doing that with him. All right, so I'm liking this. I feel like we're going to, I want to go back to that brown again. I'm going to save where I'm at. Always be hitting Command S all the time. And we're going to just kind of keep laying out this, this area. So there's a couple areas I really like. Um, actually, I might pull from this and do a more saturated, brighter green. So I'm using that hue saturation to kind of make sure I'm picking a good green. And I don't like how blue that is. I want it to be a little bit more on the yellowy side. I also don't want it to look like neon. So I might take down the saturation a little bit. And I think that's working. Let's see without the lines. Yep. So another little trick um, that I would recommend people do while they're coloring, uh, and you might see me do like toward the end once I have all these flats laid out, is you want to see how your colors work in black and white as well. So you're checking like a few things, like you're thinking about what is the um, hue of the color, what is the saturation of the color, and then also what is the value of the color, right? Like what 
what value is it? If if all your colors are equally one value, it's going to be hard for somebody to read the image. In fact, even this green might be too close in value to the green behind it for it to read effectively. So I'm going to kind of play with it and see if that is the case. And I can do a quick like squint test as I'm going. On panel one, are they leaving or entering the bay? So they're sort of entering the bay. It's also a giant ship. I had to blow the ship out of proportion just for it to read as a panel. And I think that'll work. But in theory, in reality, that ship would be about a quarter of the size it is um, compared to this landscape. If we're talking about the actual landscape that we're drawing it in. Frank was asking how long flats take. And I would say it depends on the page. Um, I can flat and color a page in a couple of hours sometimes, but on a page like this where you have to select each flat without the use of, um, I think I mentioned this before, but <clears throat> if you have just solid black and, and white lines, um, then you can use the magic wand tool and the expand uh, pixels. And like with, with those two tools, you can basically do coloring like this in a relatively fast fashion. Um, if you don't have like a lot of detail on your line art, if your line art starts getting more complicated where you can't just, um, you know, use the magic wand, then, uh, then, you know, you, yeah, you're going to be in for a little bit of time to get your flats done. Um, also, uh, you know, this is relatively early on in this process, so I'm still kind of getting a feel for the way that I want to do these, um, these pages. But I think that flats should take a while because the rendering, if, if you're rendering over bad flats, um, you can end up in a really bad scenario where, you know, you're, the color's not lining up with the art and so on. I hope that kind of makes sense. I, did that answer your question, Frank? So I kind of like this as being like the highest value area. And this is where we'll do some mild shading too. Um, but first I'm going to pick the areas that I want to have this color. I kind of... think I'll have this. Frank said yes, that did answer it. But if you have like really clean line art where it's just solid black and white, like... You could probably flat and render a page in maybe two hours, maybe an hour. Um, do it really effectively too. So it really depends on what you're coloring. Um, in this case, I think I started this page, man, maybe around 11. Now this is a book where I don't want there to be a lot of rendering on the color um, because the rendering, this is the advantage of kind of working in this style, but it's like the rendering in that kind of Arnold Lobel kind of way is like a lot of it's done with the medium and then you're just doing la flat layers of color underneath, which is a real huge advantage for like the coloring process. Um, I do think on an area like this, it might behoove me to just add a tiny bit of shading, but I wanna be careful because I don't wanna set the precedent of, um, much like the rule I talked about on a couple streams ago where it's like, hey, if you're doing a comic where, um, let's say you make a rule where you're like, there's gonna be no straight lines, like everything's gonna be unruled, which is something I established for this book. Um, that's all well and great, but the second you put a straight line in there um, and you use a ruler, now that rule, like that cheat where you're like, oh, I don't need to use a ruler. Everything's hand done on this is going to fly out of the window um, because of that. Oh, that's not enough of a difference. I need a bigger value shift on that. It's going to do... We already have three treasure chests. 
trying to kind of get a good tone here and playing up the saturation and the hue where it's different enough from the other tones. And I think that'll work. All right, so I also have some areas here that really should be still green. So we're going to go through that. So it's kind of a weird thing like this art process is like very much like a um, there's a very intellectual process to art where I think as you think things through as you're doing them and uh, even this process is an adaptation of processes that I've used a million times for clients for art. So it takes a while to figure out what you're doing sometimes in art and uh, and uh and then it gets easier and easier as you go to kind of be able to make specific calls for um for things to kind of go a different way because you you kind of know like here i'm going to have this be a little bit darker and maybe saturated and check out how that looks without the line Kind of like that. Um, you know what, though? I like the idea. I wasn't sure whether I was in indicating trees there. I think I might kind of have some, some stuff that's like right by the shore. And then I also have noticed an error here where like that sliver is going to go all the way to there. And then I do want to go back to having some green. Maybe here I'll pull the green back a little bit. No, I think this is OK. OK, there we go. So I like this subtly kind of going there. We're going to save and look at it. We're getting there, you guys. It's, it's taken a while. Coloring the pages in Captain Goggles uh, and Mask Woman took me a while. This is uh, Frank. Uh, about a month in total. I'm glad Anna agreed to do the cover because I was seriously thinking of going to Fiverr for it. I didn't want to make and color it after coloring 27 pages. Yeah, it, it can take a long time to do. The great thing is once you have your flats in place, it's really not that hard to add like extra you know, rendering or whatever. And what I'm doing here is definitely like the simplest form of flat coloring you're probably going to see in comics. Um, so there's advantages to not having this done by yourself, but at the same time, I think it's good to do. Gary's joining us, uh, Gary Hodges, who I was... Just telling people about your awesome first live stream. It was nice to watch Gary, and it was fun to fun to hop on and chat. Yeah, so like right now, I'm working on flatting my pages, and uh, well, my page, and then I'm kind of guessing that like when this is done, it might work. It might work to kind of. get it through here we go so then we might have some of this go through as well kind of trying to figure out the other thing that'll complicate your coloring process like um if you're coloring somebody else's art and it's something like this you may not have any idea like what they were intending with specific colors and in that case it can be a, a real chore to like try to kind of distinguish 
in an area like like the one I'm coloring right now where you'll be like, what was the artist intending with this? Like, I can't even tell what these are. Like, what of these are supposed to be trees, what not? Like, it really, um, the process of going through this really makes you appreciate like a, a good solid colorist or a good flatter who can kind of go through and distinguish what is and isn't essential. And then I think Frank in the chats just mentioned a uh, Taraco Creative Cast um, T-shirt. That's that's awesome. And it's of the cover, I think, of their latest thing, which I think is cool. Maybe I'll I'll uh, pull it up in a second. Although right now I definitely want to make sure that I'm I'm finishing up these um these flats and getting these flats selected and done. Okay, we're starting to get there with the flats. I'm, I'm constantly looking, what does it look like without? Is that reading? Like if you're doing your flat colors correctly, it's gonna read really well with and without line art. So Again, I think I might have to make some time of day adjustments, but other than that, I'm pretty happy with it. I know that um, I think the area we're drawing had a more um, a reddish look to the brown, so I might need to go more in that territory of like a red as I'm kind of continuing here. Continuing the journey. Okay. And I do think some of this might still be some foliage. Looking at it, I'm thinking that would make more sense as foliage, some of this stuff. So what I'm doing again is just going through and deselecting whatever is not going to be colored by the color and then keeping whatever is going to be colored by the color. So like in this case, I think I've got all my selections worked out. I think this might read better. I do think I like the idea of once I'm done with this. Yes, there we go. See, starting to work. I also think part of why this isn't necessarily working yet is that I need another value shift for the color. And I'm always tempted to do these like very saturated colors, but in this case, I think I need one level that's not as saturated. Um, I also want to go in here and just mildly up the saturation level a bit and kind of make the difference a little more of a value shift there. <clears throat> so one thing you're gonna notice is how bright color looks when you take line work off and then how dark it gets the second you add black to color, it, it like kind of muddies the color and makes it um, a little harder to read. So now we're gonna do that trick um, and then we'll get back to, now I just have to finish this panel down here. That's our panel left is the, the one on the bottom right. But once we're done with that, we're gonna get into making some subtle adjustments because I'm gonna do this so you guys can see what it would look like in black and white. I hit, oh, hold on a second, that should have worked. Image mode, grayscale. And then I'm going to say, don't merge. We're, of course, going to undo that. So if you look at this, I think that what I want is eventually I want all of the value in this is working fairly well for me. The downside to me is that sky doesn't look like it's lit by the night. And that to me is the value I'm going to want to adjust. 
Um, I think the sky is going to be a big value. I think I might have to adjust a little bit on the ship or maybe color hold the ship name, but I think we're very close to done here. So we're getting close. AGMD Studios is joining and said, hello, everybody. How's it going? All right, so I think we're gonna be good on that panel for like my, my primary flats, I'm pretty happy with. I do think I wanna mess with the sky color, but first I wanna actually get into um, getting some of this territory now. So I'm gonna go back to selecting all of the color. Now I'm gonna deselect this. Actually, let's go back, because there's one other thing I wanna adjust. I don't know about this either. I think these are supposed to be like a, a kind of weed type thing with like maybe a flower on it. So I want to have that as a much more intentional color here. Or at least have like a color shift where those kind of make a little more sense. But I like the idea of it maybe being like a purple because I do remember that being kind of a purplish flower type thing. So I'm going to go ahead and make that a purple because why the heck not? All right. Now, hopefully this is kind of making sense a little bit. I already added a little bit of just like almost like airbrushed white over it. That's just because of this like Arnold Lobel uh, tone kind of look to it. Usually I wouldn't like for lighter areas, I wouldn't usually just add white. But for specific looks, it kind of works very well. So here I don't want to draw too much attention to this part of the coast. So I think I'm going to mostly use this, the darkest um, brown from above. But I think I'm also going to do like here at about this section here behind the guy. And then maybe it'll go to here. I'm going to try to make that kind of like the big differentiating factor so it has like a semblance of more detail um i'm going to basically have like a shift there and then we're going to do just one more one or two more shifts very mild um i think like here there might be a slight color shift And then I'm thinking here, oh, like with this this edge. So then I'm going to do another quick shift. That might be too bright of a difference. Oh my goodness, did that even go through? Come on. It might be too bright of a dis difference, but let's find out. I think that's too extreme. So I'm going to go back to hide this. I want to pull as much color as I can from the previous. There we go. I think that'll do. So that one's less of a, more of a color shift. You know what? I think I'm overdoing it on that too. Maybe we'll just go back to this. Just have like more subtle shift so it's really sticking in the background there we go okay so now i'm going to go back to this uh area where i was starting to put in like white highlights i want to do that a little bit and then we're going to take a look at our um take a look and see where we're at i like the idea of oh my goodness some some Subtle kind of white highlights here. Just a few, just to kind of give it like a brightness.
so it's kind of a weird way of working where we're we're not um trying too hard to have everything be like too solid or rigid it's just about some subtle tonal shifts that can kind of change the change the game just a little bit like some tonal shifts here i like the idea of having this sort of more establishing like a light source a little bit maybe we're not totally blowing out that edge i like the idea of don't want to add too much like that might be going too much into that toned territory to have it kind of lighten in those areas but we'll see um Okay, now I'm gonna adjust. So I'm pretty happy with how this is coming out. Now I wanna adjust just a little bit of, so I have that, I'm gonna make sure that I have my, let me see, I'm gonna call this lights. So now we have our lights added a little bit. Um, if I were doing something a little more, like more subtle and, and nuanced with the color, I would probably have that color actually be like a lighter shade of the color that it's over. Um, there are ways we can kind of do that, like overlaying it, you know, so it's just more subtle, but I like it normal. I like it just to be almost like we're working in older mediums here. All right, so let's see. I want to see if I can adjust this color here now because I'm not sure if I'm like super happy with it. I want to try to brighten it up, maybe make it more of a like daytime scene. Um, So that's that's changing the daytime a little bit. Let's let's view the the previous and then that. So what do you guys think? I think the lighter is working pretty well. kind of like the contrast this makes though with the foreground. So, so now I'm thinking I might do a little bit lighter, just a little bit, and I'm gonna up my saturation. I also kind of like the idea of Maybe getting in there with the ocean. Let's see. Maybe my ocean here can have a little more of a, a saturation to it too. You know, I think that's blowing out the line art. So I'm going to go back to the old ocean because I, I think the old ocean was dead on. I think it was just the sky. All right. So I'm going to save. I think I overdid it with the lights a little bit on particularly this page. I think here I didn't necessarily need the lights to cut off where they are. Hope that makes sense. So I'm almost thinking that might be distracting to have that much on the light layer. Then again, I kind of like it. 
I kind of liked it. And you know what? I kind of like that. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and see if I should add some light to the sky as well. Almost equivalent to if I were to just brighten it up. We like that sky having a lightning to it. I kind of think I do. I kind of think I do. Do I like it? As much as I'm seeing, no, I think I need to try this again using a mask. And we're kind of getting into it a tad bit. Is this making any sense as I'm doing it? I hope it is. <laughs> All right, I think we're there. I think we're at that magical point. The only other thing I need to fix on this page before we can get into doing some other stuff would be, how is everybody, by the way, um, out there too who's watching? Like, I hope you guys are doing good. Um, I'm going to be trying to do a little bit of this. I like the idea of having a, um, I see. Hmm. This is just an experiment here. I do like the idea of having a little bit of a subtle color hold on here. Try doing this a little bit. Hmm. 
I don't think I'm liking that yet. Got to be a little bit more hardcore than that. AGMD Studios has mini comic bundles available at minicomicbundles.com. That's awesome. Are you partnered with uh, Jason? And Philip said uh, he was uh, out and just got back in. So I'm a bit late. That's okay, bud. It's nice to have you here. And Frank was talking about artist gloves in the dryer. I need to look into this artist glove thing. Let's just do the LA. I think that works pretty well. We're almost there, you guys. I'm digging this so far. I want this to be my 50, 50 and 100. And the nice thing is I have my transparent pixels locked, so I shouldn't have trouble painting over my line art, you know? So it's just gonna keep some of those subtle subtleties to it. Now we're going to do this last part. My son is building awesome things with Legos and humming to himself. So that's probably, he's providing an awesome soundtrack for you guys. Yeah, Philip said, when you first started coloring, I thought you were going to do it just like old sepia tone first, like old photos or a flashback. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit like that in the sense that there's really, it just is going to be toned under um, under just like a, a gray area of ink. But it's not quite like sepia tone. This is going to have more of like a... Um, you know, colorized movie kind of vibe to it. So at this point, I might just check one other thing. Am I going too colorful? 
Or am I not going colorful enough? I think I'm kind of in a good territory here. So yeah, I think we're in pretty good straights. I think that, um, I don't know about this blueness though. I'm almost wondering if just toning back the saturation just a little bit wouldn't hurt. Hmm. And also do the trick of You know, I got to say, I think I'm, I'm over overthinking it. Um, though I kind of do like that, res that, that reaction there. That's pretty good. If I get rid of the, let's get in here. I think I kind of like this direction a little more. All right. I think we're going to call it for this page. Does that make sense, guys? I'm actually pretty happy about it. Um, I will say like, if I zoom in, I'm feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty darn good about this page. If I zoom out, I think it's working. I think if I zoom in, it's looking pretty awesome. Let me see. Yeah, honestly, I'm pretty happy with how this has come out. Let's try. Mm. I'm happy with it. I'm going to hit save. And I'm gonna say that's a page done. Let's you do that test. Best thing to do with this kind of thing is to print it out because uh, it's CMYK. So my printer is gonna give me a rough approximation of what it'll look like. Keep in mind, whenever you're printing CMYK, compared to offset, it's never gonna be perfect, but it should be within like 10 to 15% of what the final will look like. Um, that's I think that's gonna do it for my for my page which is pretty exciting um, for the final color. So I think we're in good straights for that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna disappear for a second, get a refill of my coffee. Um, actually, let me go ahead and save. I'm gonna get a refill of my coffee and then we're gonna get moving on to potentially like roughing out the next page, which I'm really excited about. Frank is doing a very good uh, job, like kind of shouting out where people can support. 
Um, also, he mentioned that uh, you can support me by Super Chats. I do take Super Chats and appreciate Super Chats. Um, I'll be right back in about two seconds as I reassess uh, what I'm going to do next. But I'm actually, I'm overall very happy with this. This is where I want it to be. This is the level at minimum that I want to be taking the uh, the comic to on a on a page by page basis. Only one thing is going to bug me about this. And that might be the this part. Hmm. I'm wondering whether you're No, I think I'm actually pretty happy with it. Although I think maybe toning back the color might not have been the right call. I might need to actually tone up the saturation a little bit because it's getting very desaturated on the print. Just a smidge more saturated might be the way to go. It's going to look very saturated without. But I think with it might just be exactly where we want it to be. Taking a look at my print too, my physical print of it. That's another thing a lot of people don't do with finals that they should do. Um, when you're working for print, you always want to check what you're doing. Almost like press check what you're doing. There's a little blob that's going to bug me here. It's like right behind the ear. And I want to correct it a little bit. Ooh. So I don't want these strange like blobby patches of color don't make a lot of sense for a final I don't mind kind of some of the texture but it's like when it becomes obvious all right that's where we're gonna go uh Frank said Josh has gone over the two seconds <laughs> all right I'm pretty content with this.
Okay. Okay, so let me reassess now. Like, it's funny, I, I disappeared for my break, and then I came right back, like, a little too early, just because this will happen when you step away from art. The question I'm going to have here, I'm going to do a test here. Like, am I overdoing it? Let me do a real quick test print. Before I take a, I was going to take a legit break, but again, this is the beauty of art. I want to look at this with out the rendering, because I, I think that the catch of this kind of style is that like, even adding that much rendering might overdo it because it's already got so much rendering in the pencils. So I want to see if that is going to affect it real quick. Um, I'm constantly kind of testing and seeing if like the process is improved. Um, we're going to see, because maybe for this, that might be good. It might not be. We'll kind of have to find out. So let me go, let me go test that out. I might've been pushing it too far. Um, with the white. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm going to take a peek at that print. Okay, there's a few things from this that have been really helpful. Um, I think that the white was a good direction, but I am seeing an issue with the color now. So at this point, we're gonna look at this and I might even go like a little less saturated and even lighter. Check it out. That might have been too far in that direction. Let's just go a little bit lighter. Then I think for the sky, I might want to go just a notch or two lighter as well. I think for the greens, add the lighter. Sort of making color adjustments here on the fly. Yep. That's a much better direction to go. Do I want the sky to have that or that? I think I think this is the final. Let's let's check it out. See if this works. I think we've got Look at it under a light too on my art desk.
But I do feel like if you're working on books for print, it's it's good to have um, a printer, like an actual CMYK printer, so that you can test. It's not going to give you true color to what the offset would be, but it'll be close. Now I'm going to look at my two and see if this is an improvement or if I'm overthinking. I think I'm overthinking. Yeah, Gary just said I don't I don't call a page finished unless I've print tested it. I think I'm overthinking. I think the saturation was potentially good. So let's see where we go. Let's look at this. It's an interesting kind of conundrum. But I'm kind of stuck on the original vibes of the page. Yep. Original was the way to go. OK. Sweet. So that's going to do it for this page. I'm pretty excited about that. Now I have to um, prep for research for the next page. And I'm kind of excited about getting moving on that. But first, I'm going to um, save. And I'm going to feel pretty stoked. Let me see if that was a big difference. No. I'm going to feel pretty good about this process. So we got there, you guys. We finished the first page. And now it is time to kind of get into the weeds on the next. I'm wondering if this is stuff that is preppable on stream or if it's better if I kind of disappear again and, uh, and get moving at that point. But I kind of think this is stuff we can kind of put together. Um, from my roughs. From my roughs, I'm on page. Sorry, I know this is like really entertaining to hear, <laughs> to hear all this uh, um, ASMR uh, paper noises. OK, you know what? We're going to print this. Since this is the final page, at least for what I'm thinking right now, um, I'm going to kind of close it out. I think we need to do for the final, I kind of want to have it um, I do need to do a JPEG of it. So I'm going to save that real quick. So I have something to show my publisher. And I think I'm actually pretty good with this. Um, that's going to be put in my web folder. And then we're going to get into some roughs. I don't know if I have shown you guys like the last page since the revisions. So I'll kind of catch us up on that. 
going to pull open the um the text which is going to be the I just have to find the script here. But yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy with the test print. Let me go grab that. Yeah, this test print's the way to go. So now we have our sequence kind of going in here. So that's that's all set. So now I'm going to basically open the not death but love manuscript and hopefully that's appeared. So again, like for anybody who might just be tuning in, uh, I'm working on the um, process of making not death but love the strange supernatural story of Elizabeth Barrett Browning created by my sister Lavender Roman and uh, we are on page six of the script here. Um, that's the last one we roughed out. The one thing that I added uh, that I haven't shown on stream was there's a poem by Elizabeth Barrett. So basically we worked on this scene where her eyes are closed. Um, we, you know, we're introduced to um, where she lives. We see like an exterior shot on the outside of the building. And then basically we're, now inside of the building at 50 Wimple Street. And um, this is where her family lived. And she is just in mourning because of her, her brother who died at sea, who, were, who we just finished drawing the first page of. So now is a poem. Like, uh, this is the one thing we didn't add the last time. We did our overhead shot. Um, I added a few things. Like, I noticed that there's a pattern on the rug and we added that. I think that was on stream, but the thing that wasn't on stream was the poem I saw in a gradual vision through my tears, the sweet, sad years, the melancholy years, those of my own life, who by turns had flung a shadow across me straightway I was where. So weeping, how a mystic shape did move behind me and draw me backward by the hair and a voice said in mastery while I strove, guess who now who holds thee death i said but there the silver answer ring not death but love and then elizabeth's eyes open so that's where we're at that's the last page now let's get into the next page which is going to be page seven um this is going to be a beast so let me, let me get everything ready to prep for that um okay so we had page six page seven is going to be on the same page size uh, side as page five i already have these pages preloaded um with ruling on them so that like basically my guides are set for my bleed and my safe area and stuff like that and they're going to alternate page by page what we established is we're starting on an odd page that's going to be our recto page like on the right side the verso side is always going to be even. So basically page three on the right, we flip page four. We just finished page three, right? Um, page four, page five, page six, page seven. So now we're on the right again. Hopefully that makes sense. So what I'm going to do uh, is first I'm going to steal one of my previous pages and make that into, so I took page five. Um, we're going to open that up and then we're going to delete out all of page five. All of it. So I basically saved this as page seven and 
what you're going to notice is it's set up for a right facing page, right? Because it's an odd page. We're on seven. Uh, that means that the the reason that's important is like every odd page is going to have bleed that goes to the right that's not on the left because that's going to be the middle of the book, right? The spine. Um, anything even is going to have bleed on the left of it. And then the right hand side of that page is going to be uh, nothing in the middle. Okay. I think we're about ready to get moving. Um, this is going to be a complex one to work out. We again have 50 Wimple Street. We're going to have to research and look stuff up. Um, and it's going to be an interesting endeavor to kind of get into. And I got to disappear again to get get to get a, a legit uh, two second break with coffee. <laughs> so I'll be right back. I'm sorry. I know I've been disappearing a lot on stream. I'm excited, though. Um, I didn't expect to get the uh, color wrapped up uh, as quickly as I did. And uh, thanks to Gary, too, for the stream um, in which I did most of the work for that on on his stream because uh, it was an entertainment entertaining conversation. I got way further on it than I expected. So I'll be right back. So Corey, Corey very wisely pointed out, I'm going to try to get this loaded up for future streams, that what I can do for those breaks is actually put on a trailer for my graphic novels, um, which actually maybe I can do um, in the future. So I'm definitely planning on loading some of those up so that when I disappear, we can put on a trailer for like, uh, two stories and then a trailer for Jacob's apartment that'll like fill some of that that gap and give me a little bit of a window to uh, to disappear off stream but keep the stream rolling which I think I think would be great so I'm gonna try to kind of make that happen but I need to actually um, remember to which makes me realize my whole life is based on um, lists and reminders of things to do and that's something I'm going to re remind myself to do by putting a putting it on a list, like upload the. Um, <laughs> Gary said I'm planning on selling my dead airspace as ad space. Upload the trailer. That's actually not a bad idea. Um, reach tens of potential customers. Yeah, same here. We have we're small streamers. I feel like if anyone could do that, it would be Scott. Like, Scott's channel is huge. Um, I have a feeling that he might actually be able to generate some revenue on that. Um, <laughs> we'll have to see. Mm. All right, I'm coffeeed up. We're ready. We're going to start with a thumbnail. And uh, I th I'm thinking I'll go probably another hour or so before I kind of take a little snack break or whatever. Um, although I am glad, like between the last stream I did in this one, I did shower. That's a good, that's a good starting point for these things. Um, Gary said, I would buy an ad on a CircWorks video. Yeah, me too. 100%. The idea of selling the ads is kind of not a bad idea, Gary. Maybe I'll maybe I'll look into that, like for real. <laughs> mm. All right. Okay, so here we go. Now we have our script, and we're gonna kind of break it down. The door to fifty to number fifty opens slightly. I'm reading the script here. Script is right down here. If you guys want to follow along. Um, the door to number 50 opens slightly as Elizabeth's person and Elizabeth's personal maid. Okay. 
So I'm going to make my little research list. Um, the door to number 50 opens. So I need number 50, which we have plenty of reference. And remember, we had to modify the doors uh, on previous streams because of the door that I had researched before is the current door. And the new one kind of has like an archway like this. Whoa, there's a crazy lag on my computer. Oh my gosh, that's not good. That's not good. That's really not good. Shouldn't be lagging like that. I might have to break even sooner. Okay, so the door kind of is like this. Um, it's something like that where basically every other section of it. Oh my gosh, what's with the lag? My computer's not happy about the, the constant streaming. Um, anyhow, so the sections are kind of black and white and peppered a little bit with, with color. So anyhow, whatever. We, we have that. We have plenty of reference. We know what that looks like, so I don't need to look that up. But still, that's something. What I'm going to do, like when I'm thumbnailing, is I always work to, uh, from a script is you want to break down what are your items, like what are what's your location, and then what are the actions, right? Um, that's basically what I'm thinking right now. Elizabeth's maid. Wilson. That's something I have to look up. She's going to enter. Also, uh, I'm going to need to look up um, Victorian maid, which I might have to Google off stream because who knows? This is the downside. Like The funny thing about working in-house as a creative too, and I'm sure Gary can attest to this, is like, you end up having to look up some stuff that gets some shady results that like, were you in any other department, people would be like, whoa, red flag. This guy's looking weird stuff up online. Whereas it's like, look, I literally need to look up a Victorian maid. That's <laughs> that's part of my job. <laughs> um, okay. Spots Robert across the street. Robert, we have... That's good. We have reference of that across the street and then disappears back inside. That's a lot of actions, um, but the page is going to continue. Carriage pulls up. So, again, we have a carriage. I think this is going to be a different carriage than the one we looked up, though. Uh, and now we're going to do... Ah, now we need Edward... Molten Barrett, Elizabeth's uh, not so nice dad. A fat, grumpy looking old man emerges from the house and steps into the waiting cab. So I'm thinking this is going to be a cab carriage, but it's not going to be like the one we had before. The one we had before was like a working class carriage. I think this is going to be a like potentially like wealthier carriage, like like well, maybe a closed enclosed carriage. We'll have to see because it, it is raining in this sequence, too. Um, Robert remains huddled across the street watching okay robert robert we're good and, and even robert's costume i think we're good on the door to number 50 opens again wider this time and wilson gest gestures at uh robert and then he crosses the street all right so it's going to be wimple street so the nice thing is we've already looked up this we've already looked up this we this one we need to do some research on um this one we have uh plenty of reference although maybe we could use a little more reference i might like want one or one or two more of robert elizabeth's maid we definitely have to look up um and then the number 50 door we're, we're set for so that's that's our little research list all right we have our research list now let's get into our thumbnail and our thumbnail is like you know 
a thumbnail is a thumbnail. It's a real quick sketch. This one might take a couple iterations to kind of figure out. All right, so we have the door to number 50 opening slightly. And Elizabeth's personal maid, Wilson, nervous and bird-like, pops her head out. So there's a couple ways we could do this. I kind of think I want to do this as a sequence from the same angle. So we could have like a wide shot... Gonna have like your number 50 here. Could have a wide shot. I'm trying to think what side doors. Okay, yeah. Wide shot of the door. Not sure what the whether it's gonna have a window or not. We'll work that out. This is gonna be 50 wimple. This one's going to have her maid. Here's where we're just going to cheat with our thumb. I'm going to have the maid pop out. So this is going to be the maid kind of popping, popping out looking. Again, we're just doing thumbs. And, uh, She spots Robert across the street and then disappears inside. I kind of want a zoomed in picture of the maid kind of peeking around. So maybe this is the... the maid. I don't know. We're going to have to see what the maid looks like, right? And we'll do this from like an angle too, so it's a little more interesting. Something like that. Keeping my maid on the left, left, left here. Uh, too close. Hmm. I'm trying to think. Got it. Maid's going to be looking over. Door. Probably going to have like one of those maid hats or whatever. Uh, Robert's going to be standing across the street. Remember, we saw Robert before, a couple thumbnails before. And I think this is going to be a lot more interesting if we can kind of 
And again, these are flats, so it's going to be interesting if we can kind of keep it. I'm thinking Z pattern. So here I want this. I'm going to want this at more of an angle. Again, this is a thumbnail, not a rough. Like we're going to get into roughs in a bit. So that's the beauty of a thumbnail is we can get real, real crazy with it. Because I want basically like to create that movement of your eye. Now I want to make this movement. So in order to make that Z movement, I think we're going to do this. I like that angle. I think that's pretty clear. But I want to almost like exaggerate the lean over and stuff. So that way it creates like angles that are going to kind of make your eye kind of go there. I don't know if that makes sense. So there we go. We're going to have her spotting Robert across the street and then disappears back inside. What am I doing here? Disappears back inside. Okay. Again, same angle. This is going to be, you know, shut. So it could have like a slam or a, it shouldn't be a slam. What would be just a regular shut noise? Hmm. I don't know. I'm going to put click. I, I think I need to come up with a better sound effect. Carriage pulls up. Carriage is going to pull up um, like so. We have our carriage, our horse. Our overweight guy. I like the idea of maybe we have the maid a little bit in the background there. I know we're packing a lot into a little space, but. I think a nine panel grid is going to be the way to go for this. Grumpy old man emerges from the house and steps into the waiting cab. I want a different angle here of the cab, maybe from the other angle. So we're going to have the guy getting onto his cab. And that'll be the horse or whatever. Got the guy wait, stepping onto his cab. This is going to be the other angle of things. OK, 
Okay, the door to 50 is supposed to open again. This might be like clacka, 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 or click, 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 or whatever of the of the the horse. Now we're gonna have Wilson again. This time she's gonna be gesturing, like, come on over. You come on in. And then I think here we're going to have Robert's going to cross be crossing the street, but very quickly. And this will be more like 50. Okay, I think we have a rough idea here of how this is going to work. Uh, yeah, yeah, Scott just said, I'll pimp your stuff for free, Gary. And then uh, he also said, I just got back in Arizona. I have a lot of live streams to catch up on. Did you already do yours, Gary? Also, I saw Jeff Lafferty back with a new art cast. No way. I'm excited. I'll have to check that out. Maybe while I'm working on pencils for um, age four, maybe I'll uh, listen to Jeff's stream. Jeff was one of the founders of the art casters, which it's going to be kind of cool to see him rocking again. I miss that dude. Um, there's our thumbnail. I know it's weird. Now I want to look at this and see is anything unessential. Nope. I know it's weird, but it's like, I think everything's essential here. Now we're in pretty good shape to do our research, which is pretty exciting. Yeah, very good shape to do our research. Okay. Door to number 50. I know I have research for that because we have... We have that in place. So I'm going to go ahead and open up where we have that in place, which should be... Yes, we should be there. Okay. Page five, I believe, was the one. I'm glad you liked the conversation, Gary, on the stream. I thought you did a good job with it. I need to, this is just a personal thing. I need to work on cutting people off less in conversations. That's something I tend to do. It's like I get really excited. And like many interrupters, I will get overly excited and kind of cut people off or interrupt. And it's something I definitely need to work on. Um, so anyhow, I think even appearing on a stream like that like um, is, is good practice for me to kind of like <laughs> learn the ropes on that. Um, do we want the cabbie to be the same kind of cabbie that appeared on this page? What do you guys think? I mean, that's that's what I need to kind of figure out is like this cab that... Oh, wait, are you guys even looking at the same cab? You're not. Haha. -ha. I see what's happening. Okay, this is our previous page, right? Do we want the cab that I have up here... Is that a cab that I should use or should I use a different kind of cab? I'm wondering, do we want a handsome cab or should I do a new cab? I think I need a new cab. 
Now I need to find that front of the building. There it is. There is the door to 50 Wimpole Street, the original, as it appeared back in the day. That's what I needed. So there's my number 50 door. That's as much uh, as I'm going to get, in all honesty. Um, new cab, Jake said. How about a cool cab? I like that. <laughs> all right. So we have that. Um, there's a lot of other stuff that I need to look up. Okay, so there's my my street. All right. Do I have Robert stuff on here? Or are we gonna have to go online and look that up? I think we had his costume. Can't remember if it was gonna be. I believe this was gonna be Robert's costume. Oh, my goodness, that wasn't helpful. Let's find Robert's costume. So the research, uh, luckily, is gonna go a little quicker this time than before, where we have to kind of make things up. Okay, and I think we had Robert, previous uh, stuff of Robert Browning. If not, I'll, I'll look up some stuff in stream. There's old school Robert Browning, and there is a much younger, idealized Robert Browning. There's another old one. Aha! That is all I need. Right there is my primary reference for Robert Browning. Has very strange Victorian beard, which I shouldn't comment on strange beards because I believe I'm well into that territory myself. So this is going to be Robert. We already looked that up. Already done. What else do we need? Carriage or cab? What do you guys think? Do you think a handsome cab like I had on page five is good or should we bring in a new carriage? My gut on it is it should be like a wealthier class of carriage than like, it's kind of like you have, um, if we put this in a modern context, like the car we just saw drive past the Brownings on page five, which I'll show you guys. Um, like this cab, that's equivalent to like, if we had a shot of like New York in the current day and you see a, a cab, like a, you know, checkered cab or something pull up to the sidewalk now robert like basically um edward molten barrett is like super wealthy right not like his son edward right but um he's super wealthy so like when he pulls out i i feel like it should be like if i were doing a film of it in the modern days uh on page five you would see a checkered cab just to kind of establish like okay there's there's a throughway here that's a street in front of number 50. But then like to show the wealth of this guy, I think having like a more exquisite carriage or like in a modern context, it would be like a Rolls Royce or a limo pulls up and, and picks up the guy. And it like just shows you a little bit about like the class difference of what's going on here. So I'm kind of thinking that's probably better. But I'll, I'll kind of wait till I hear, hear your guys's thoughts on that all right and i might have to pull open and we might have to get into some research so victorian cab uh not cab victorian i need to do this too victorian carriage have this be a 
Okay, so let's try and see what we can do here. Aha! There we go. So we're going to do a little bit of searching on here. So on the last one, we had a handsome cab, but I kind of feel like we can do better than a handsome cab. Oh, no, Jake said I closed a file without saving. Oh, that's a problem. Um, all right, I'm going to pop into this Victorian cab business. I hope it wasn't too much work, Jake. You got to gotta make sure you're saving that stuff. I'll be right back as I think about this Victorian, wait, wait, Victorian carriage. Okay. Images. See, I'm thinking like that top. There we go. And the nice thing about my thumbnail. So I have a rough idea. Okay. Yeah. I think we're getting there. So I don't want like the queen's cab either. I just want like something a little more. Let's see. Yeah, I want something more like this for the cab. So that's how we're going to go on this, okay? We're going to go with a like more classy. This is like the the real fancy guy, you know? I think like a closed one, but it's a little more like he's he's of like a bit of a stature. So I'm going to call this the cab. Call this Robert. So I got my cab, I got Robert, I've got Robert's costume, and I've got 50 Wimpledore. Wimpledore sounds like Dumbledore's sad cousin. Doesn't it? I'm going to just spell it as Wimpledore, too. I added a lot of new albums to the deck of, of parody. So it was um, just those that I lost. Felt like an idiot, which fit my losing my my addition to the a a Iggy Pop. Oh, of the Iggy Pop uh, record. Well, that's cool. All right, so we're going to save... What else do I need? Edward Moulton Barrett. That's what we have to find out now. So let's see if we can see what Edward Moulton Barrett looked like. Edward Moulton Barrett. But Edward Moulton Barrett didn't look like Charles Lofton, okay? What did he look like, though? Biographical, let's see if we have Browning likenesses. Maybe we'll have it in here. Nope. This might be one where we just have to look it up. Man, what a crazy name. Edward Barrett Moulton Barrett. Hello, my name is Barrett, Mr. Barrett Barrett. McBarrett Pants. That's... <laughs> huh. 
Huh. A wiki tree. I don't really want a wiki tree. That sounds shady. I feel like I had a good image of her dad that I found when I was looking for her younger brother because he has the name Edward Barrett. Should be a good indication for people. Hey, don't name your kids the exact same name you have. It makes it hard for researchers in the future. Just keep that in mind. If you want to live a historical life that's worthy of being documented, uh, name your kids something easy to research and differentiate from you. Um, although maybe that's the point, right? So we have, what is this? Edward Selwyn Moulton Barrett. That doesn't seem right. So I mean, there's a, you know, there's this kind of thing, the Uncle Scrooge look, which I can use. It's definitely not accurate, but I can use it as a template. Um, there's this, this uh, from the movie that I don't think is too accurate. Man, our dog is just going crazy on the barking. He gets very excited about eating his food. Let's see here. I will say if you guys stumble upon like an Edward Barrett thing, let me know. If you're able to find Edward Moulton Barrett, give me a heads up. So we've got... This might be one of those scenarios, too, where um, I might have to kind of reach out to the writer and see if they have anything. Victorian Valentine. Aha, this is a story about the Brownings. I don't care about your story. Just give me a picture of... Or a drawing. I apologize. Stories are good. It's just I didn't care about the, the sketch there. I mean, he was definitely not a great dude. And what's a shame is the only existing images that I'm seeing are like Basil Rathbone playing. That's not good. Edward Moulton Barrett. Well, there we go. Wikipedia. Let's see. I think this might be a different Edward Moulton. An English sprinter. An athletic trainer. This is definitely not uh, Mr. Barrett. 
Mr. Barrett. Avery Sharp. I don't know. That guy's pretty rad looking. That's what I'd like her father to look like. That would be fun to draw. Hey. Hey. Hey there. What's that? Brother Alfred. I'm not looking for the brother Alfred either. I could have sworn that I got an image of her father long ago. Now it appears that is not the case. And her father is not going to look anything like Robert, which is a lot of what comes up here. We're going to keep looking, guys. I'm not, not giving up entirely. So we have a lot of letters. Oh. All right, we're in Cambridge now. Hey, you know what's cool? I've just been intuitively calling Elizabeth Barrett Browning EBB on my sketches. And check this out. These, uh... These notes, biographical notes made by somebody at Cambridge University Press uh, is using EVB as shorthand for Elizabeth Barrett Browning. So look at that. I am as smart as someone, I'm just going to pretend that doesn't say University Press, as somebody from Cambridge. Not really. But it's fun to think. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah, so far I'm not seeing anything. Oh, that's hard. But fun. Like, this is the great thing about um, drawing stuff from that era. All right. Drawing stuff from that era, I think, can be really fun. So now I'm just going to do... I'm going to just look up a costume. Should be eighteen forties. If I've got the grump, the grumpy dad who's going to disappear, sort of the overweight gentleman. I 
I'm thinking one of these more smarmy, pretentious costumes might come into play. Particularly the more fur-based type thing. I'd, I'd also like the stripe, the stripe down the leg thing. That might work really well. Let's see if we can find a... Hey, look at that. If we have a guy who's a little bit chubbier than this dude... A little wider, a little more evil on the jowls and stuff i think that might be close and again i will confirm with my sister to see if there's other images of him it doesn't seem like there are so we'll invent it which invention is fun okay so we've got a rough idea of that are we all set for references and thumbnail? Wimple Street, we've got that. Well, well, well. Okay, we just have one more thing to look up. It's going to be 50 Wimple Street. All right. I wanted to do 50 Wimpole Street, London. What in the heck is going on with my, uh... oh, I don't care anymore. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. I might have to do some of this off air because it just takes so long. There we go. I want to go to 50 Wimple Street, please. There we go. Yes. That's where I would like to be. Did I go to 50 Wimple? Okay, lovely. It's got a 52 Wimple Street, that's fine. I'm lost a little bit on this, so I need to find my location. It's been a while. Okay, I guess that is the consulting rooms thing. Okay. Right. 
We're on Wimpole Street, you guys. There's 48. There's 50. All right. So I'm going to try to do one thing a little further away. Aha. That's okay. That is okay. We can do this. Hmm. <laughs> I like this. Um, Jake said, Josh, Google driving is until Tuesday. I can't backseat view this. That's hilarious. All right, so I'm thinking that this at least is going to give us a window into what we're what we're sort of looking at. Obviously with a different Okay. Cool. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of our earth all right. I think our Google Earth Drive is done. I think I have all the tools I need to get moving on the thumbnail. I had all the tools before the, the Google search, but I thought it would be nice. Cool. So I'm going to just call this Wimpole, just to just have a little bit more. And then we've got uh, Ed costume. And we're going to have this as, actually, I'm going to say face idea. And we're going to have this be costume. Cool. So we've done all our research that we need to do our type, our, our roughs, basically. And then from there, we should be in a pretty good shape to, you know, work on the page and stuff. So um, I think that'll do it for the stream for now. Because I think from this point, I probably need to take a quick break, maybe get a snack or something. And then we're going to get right into this business and, uh, and draw out some really rad stuff. So I feel like we, we made some progress. We know exactly what I need to do for the next thing. I finished the colors for the page that I was hoping to finish. And I appreciate those of you who came to hang out and kind of research along with me and draw along with me, I hope you guys are having equal luck on your projects. Um, but we're at the start of page seven. The next time I go through it, um, the next the next time I go through it, we'll, we'll basically be um, working on the final rough for, for that page. So is a strange thing. So um, let me show what we did accomplish, though, before we kind of call it a day. Because I do feel pretty good about that. And I'll probably be back on stream to rough this out once, I've, once I kind of had my food. So we accomplished this. Um, that's pretty cool. I'm pretty excited about finishing a page. And we've got a good headway going for uh, the rough for page seven, which I'm excited about. And it's going to be a long weekend, so I'll be on and off uh, stream working hard on this stuff. Um, but at least at this point, we have like a very clear window of where we're heading. So um, anyhow, with that being said, thanks to everybody who showed up and hung out on stream.
And uh, if you haven't yet, go back to this. Um, please make sure that you have pre-ordered this book, Jacob's Apartment, which is my graphic novel um, about these two characters that are going through changes in their lives. Uh, Jacob is uh, basically struggling to find his faith um, and, and to retain and hold on to his faith in light of his father's uh, sickness. And then Sarah is kind of reeling and questioning her identity because of a broken relationship um, with an ex-boyfriend who moved out of state. Uh, they're both roommates, and they both start finding commonality, uh, a lot, finding they have a lot in common, even though they're very opposite. They have a lot in common in their love of literature, and as they're pursuing their dreams in making literary works, uh, they start finding common threads of connection and their dreams and reality start interlocking and interweaving in a wonderful doomed romance story. So if you're into like slice of life, doomed romance stories like um, Eternal Sunshine for the Spotless Mind or uh, Ghost World, um, this book will be right up your alley. So go to your local bookstore and make sure you've pre-ordered that. And I would also say, um, please equally... Uh, make sure that you have bought yourself a copy of two stories, my graphic novel about faith and mental illness uh, that's hand lettered, hand inked, and then handed to you in print uh, from um, Google. And if you have, or did I just say Google? Oh my gosh, I'm exhausted. Um, from Amazon, if you, if you order through Amazon and you have Amazon Prime, you should get free shipping on it. If you want to support your local comic shops or indie bookstores, ask them to order it. So, That'll do it, and I will see you guys probably in about an hour or so when I when I get back on stream and start roughing out, uh, working on finalizing the roughs for that page. Or I might switch gears and maybe work on another final page, um, depending. Either way, I need to make progress on the book. So um, anyhow, see you guys then, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.